What's going on everybody, KG here. We're going to talk about the Samsung 2026 lineup today as it was announced at CES. Now, this is information that I got at a pre-briefing, so we're going to go over the whole entire lineup that was revealed at CES, but that does not mean that there won't be more TVs this year from Samsung. It's just what they have shown so far. So just remember that as we go through these slides that I made for you. So let's start off first with the Neo QLED TVs, and we're going to see that the QN70H is going to be replacing the QN70. F. There wasn't a lot of information on these Neo QLED TVs. We just know that this is going to be the replacement model. And it also has DLG 288 hertz gaming, which is just going to be having the resolution in order to achieve a little bit of a higher refresh rate from your TV. This is something we have seen in the past from other TV manufacturers like TCL. So it's interesting that they noted this for the QN70H. It could apply to other models as well, but for some reason, it was only listed on the QN70H, but just kind of take that one as a grain of salt. Going on to the QN80H, we're seeing that this is going to be replacing the QN80F, of course, of last year, and it will be available in a 100 inch screen size. It's also going to have more dimming zones than before. Again, there wasn't a ton of information on the Neo QLED TVs, but these were the two models that they had announced, and we're not really expecting a QN90H, and that's because I believe it was replaced by something else, which I'm going to talk about in just a second. But before I go on to what replaced it, let's talk about really quickly the frame series, as it did change a little bit. So the Frame Pro has a new 55-inch version. It did not have that last year, and the baseline frame itself is going to be changing as well. Only the 50-inch and 42-inch sizes will have the wired One Connect box with the frame. Now, if you want to get any other sizes of the frame, like 55 inch, 65 inch, 75 inch, 85 inch, and a new 98 inch version, well, they have those, but this version of the frame is going to have built-in connections, just like your traditional TVs. Now let's move on to what I believe replaced the QN90F, and that is going to be the R85H micro RGB. That's right, micro RGB, the brand new technology that Samsung announced last year and released in a 115 inch screen size is coming to smaller sizes this year. If you're not familiar with micro RGB, I did a video on it talking about their announcement of it for these smaller screen sizes, and now we know a little bit more about them. So the R85H is going to be available in 55 inch, 65 inch, 75 inch, 85 inch, and then a 98 inch or 100 inch version. They didn't specify which one was going to be released. They just listed them both. So I'm not really sure what was going on with that. It's also worth noting that all the micro RGB TVs are going to have the HDR10 plus advanced support. They made an emphasis to talk about that for the micro RGB TVs. I personally believe the R85H is going to be replacing the QN90F and I believe it will be around the same price. That's just my personal opinion on this. And then moving on, you have the R95. 5H, which is going to be a step up from the R85H, but this version is going to have the glare free screen finish that we have seen from other Neo QLED TVs and other OLED TVs from Samsung. So, if you're looking for that glare free finish, you have to go with the R95H, and this will be available in 65 inch, 75 inch, 85 inch, and a 130 inch screen size. This model is also going to have optional wireless One Connect box support as well, which means you can buy the wireless wireless one connect box separately and hook it up to this TV. Otherwise you do have all the connections in the back of the TV. Now, before I move on to the other TVs, I do want to highlight this 130 inch screen size because I think it's a really cool TV overall. They showed it off. It's kind of its own premium model and it's based off of what they call a timeless frame design. And man, does this look like a cool TV design. You can see the design here as well. It is just an absolutely crazy looking design. And that is something that I took away from CES from Samsung is they had a lot of TVs that just looked really cool overall. I mean, even the OLED that we're gonna go over here in a second is just a different type of design. Now moving on from micro RGB, we have the brand new OLED TVs. And I'm gonna start off with the S85H as there wasn't a lot of information about this. They just made a note that there was going to be a new 48 inch and the reasoning for this was specifically targeted at gamers. So I think that's a really cool thing to have a more affordable OLED in the 48 inch screen size to go along with the other options that are out there for 48 inch OLED TVs. Again, nothing beyond that was really announced for the S85H. 
Going on to the S90H, this now has a glare-free screen. So those of you that were looking for the S90 series and looking for a glossy only screen, well, you're not gonna get that anymore. You're going to have to go with last year's model, the S90F, if you want a glossy OLED while it still is out there for a Samsung TV. Otherwise, the S90H is going to have that glare-free screen and it is going to be 15% brighter than before. Now moving on to a big one, which is the S95H. This is sporting a brand new design and wow, does it look like a really different TV all in all. It has this brand new metal bezel with what I have seen described as a floating presence design. I think this looks really awesome and I'm really afraid that it might be kind of heavy, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But this is a different looking design for sure. I really got to get it in my hands to kind of understand if I like it or not. Now they say this is 35% brighter than before. I'm willing to guess that it has the latest QD OLED panel from Samsung Display, which Samsung Display has said can get up to 4,500 nits peak brightness in their testing. Remember though, those figures don't always align with actual figures that we're going to get out of the TVs themselves. Last year, Samsung Display quoted 4,000 nits. Just understand that Samsung Electronics, which is separate from Samsung Display, is saying that it's 35% brighter than before. This is also, of course, going to have the glare-free screen, which we're used to with the S95 series. But this year with the S95 series, there won't be a One Connect box coming with the TV. Instead, it'll have built-in connections just like any traditional TV has, which may be a relief for the people that didn't want the One Connect box with their flagship TV. Instead, if you want the optional wireless One Connect box, you can buy it and hook it up to the TV and it will work just like that. And while this wasn't on the Samsung briefing, I did notice that on the CES website, they had the Samsung 48 inch S95H, which is going to be a W OLED because as of right now, Samsung display doesn't make a 48 inch QD OLED, but this is going to have 165 Hertz refresh rate with VRR. So I thought that was really interesting that they have a 48 inch S95H version. It's the first I've heard about it other than this right here on the CES website itself where they gave one of their innovation awards to the Samsung OLED S95H. So let me give you my closing thoughts on what I see from the lineup here. I think it's pretty interesting overall how the micro RGB is going to eat into that Neo QLED space. Instead of having Neo QLEDs be the kind of focus for the LCDs, you can see that they're really driving micro RGB. And it does look like it's actually going to be in that affordable range for a lot of consumers. So in that QN90F range that we saw last year, we should see the R85H. Of course, we don't have pricing yet. That's just my guess. And if we're looking at the R95H, then I'm thinking that it's going to be closer to the S95H's price tag when you're talking about price comparisons. Again, we don't have prices, so that's just my guess there. And on the lineup for OLEDs, I think there is going to be some disappointment that there is not really going to be a glossy finish as of right now. But I'm hearing whispers that there is a possibility that more OLED models are going to be talked about even further. Of course, we need to know more about the S85H before we can really even speculate anything else. Really, all we know is what we know from the CES briefing. So let me know your thoughts on this Samsung lineup. Which one are you interested in? Or is there something you're hoping for that they didn't announce yet that you're hoping to get maybe in the future? Tell me in the comments below. I'd love to hear your answer. And if you guys want to keep watching coverage on CES 2026, stay tuned to the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel and I hope to see you in the next one.